Welcome to History 112, Lecture 47, The Age of Malays. Upon becoming president, General Ford has to try to repair the image of the American government while also trying to balance the conditions of the American economy, both of which were in tatters following Richard Nixon. And one of the major problems for General Ford is that Americans show a lot of resentment and suspect a secret deal between Ford and Nixon after Ford pardons Nixon for any and all crimes that he may have committed during his presidency. Now, Ford is going to push aside the idea of wage and price controls and propose ineffective voluntary efforts to ease pressure of the recession that America is going to endure in 1974 and 1975. But where Ford was a little more successful was he met with Leonid Brezhnev, the leader of the Soviet Union, and he signed some arms control treaties and arms control accords that are going to serve as the basis for the SALT II Treaty, which is also going to further limit the number of nuclear weapons held by both sides in the Cold War. Now, out of the Ford presidency, he's going to have to fight re-election. He's not going to be successful, and Jimmy Carter is going to win the election in 1976. Carter's campaign is going to be one that's going to base him itself on representing Carter as someone who is trying to represent the American majority who are suspicious of entrenched bureaucracies and complacent public officials. His legislative proposals are going to include major reforms of the tax and welfare system, and Carter is going to fin spend most of his time trying to fix the economy and raise public spending and while cutting federal taxes. Now, after the giant fuel shortage in 1979, Carter is going to give a televised speech called the Malay Speech, and in this speech, he is going to include proposals for resolving the energy crisis. Importantly, Carter's Malay Speech, or the Crisis of Confidence as it's technically known, is really the defining moment of the Carter presidency. And more important than what he sees as a solution to the energy crisis, he talks about what he sees as a crisis of American society and a crisis of American values. And importantly, this speech does not resonate with the American public. Majority don't want to hear about values. They want to hear about solutions to the economy. And this really turns the American people off to what Carter is talking about. So let's listen to a little bit of the speech. Our people are losing that faith, not only in government itself, but in the ability as citizens to serve as the ultimate rulers and shapers of our democracy. As a people, we know our past, and we are proud of it. Our progress has been part of the living history of America, even the world. We always believed that you were part of a great movement of humanity itself called democracy, involved in the search for freedom. And that belief has always strengthened us in our purpose. But just as we're losing our confidence in the future, we're also beginning to close the door on our past. In a nation that was proud of hard work, strong families, close-knit communities, and our faith in God, too many of us now tend to worship self-indulgence and consumption. Human identity is no longer defined by what one does, but by what one owns. But we've discovered that owning things and consuming things does not satisfy our longing for meaning. We've learned that piling up material goods cannot fill the emptiness of lives which have no confidence. Or purpose. The symptoms of this crisis of the American spirit are all around us. For the first time in the history of our country, a majority of our people believe that the next five years will be worse than the past five years. Two-thirds of our people do not even vote. The productivity of American workers is actually dropping. And the willingness of Americans to save for the future has fallen below that of all other people in the Western world. 
Much of Jimmy Carter's presidency was really defined by values-based and morals-based arguments, and his main goal during his presidency was to rebuild the concept of human rights throughout the world. Now, Carter's greatest accomplishment is going to be in improving relations between Egypt and Israel. In 1979, the Camp David Accords were signed, which marked a formal end to hostilities between the two countries. And Carter's also going to be very successful in improving relations between China and the Soviet Union and between China and the United States. Jimmy Carter's biggest foreign policy failing comes in the form of the Year of the Hostages. Now, what had happened was the United States had been giving political and military support to the government of the Shah of Iran in the hopes that he would be able to fight back against any Soviet incursions in the Middle East. Essentially, the United States is looking for as a strong ally in the region other than Israel. Now, in 1979, there's a revolution in Iran that's going to force the Shah to flee. Now, the United States is going to try to establish cordial relations with the new government, but the revolution in Iran was extremely anti-Western and had gone too far, too fast for the United States to be able to do anything to establish good relations there. Now, on November 4th, 1979, our mob is going to invade the American embassy in Tehran, taking diplomats and military personnel hostage, and they're going to demand to exchange those for the return of the Shah. Now, Carter's going to be unable to resolve this crisis during his presidency, and to make matters worse, American influence in the region is going to deteriorate further, and the Soviets are going to invade Afghanistan in December of 19, uh, 27, 1979, and angered by this invasion, Carter's going to impose a series of economic sanctions on the Soviets, further damaging relations with the Soviet Union. So what's the big idea here? Well, first and foremost, Ford cannot restore the image of the American government and cannot win re-election. Now, Carter comes in, he cannot get the economy moving, and he cannot resolve the hostage crisis. Now, Carter and Ford are both unable to bring the United States out of the crises that began under presidents like LBJ and Johnson. See you in the next lecture.